sounds good and everything's ready. Are you ready to go? I'm ready, sir. Okay. Ready. Here it comes then. It starts in three, two, one. It's just some ordinary fishing line partially covered with rubber tubing. I can't even get the needle in him. He's built like a brick wall. I'm not angry. I'm passionate. Duh. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the morning stream. It is TMS for Wednesday, July the 10th, 2019. Scott Johnson here. Brian Ibbett there. Good morning. Here I am. Come and take me. Yeah. Here you am. Dun it, dun it. Rock you like Rock a hurricane. Like a hurricane. Oh, man. That album still plays in my head all the time. And if it was in Utah, it would actually rhyme, right? Because it's here I am. Mm-hmm. Rock you like a hurricane. Yeah, hurricane. <laughs> Rocky like hurricane. A, a hurricane where uh, where the the horses roam freely, I guess. I don't know what the deal is down <laughs> right. there. Hurricane. Hurricane. Uh, good to be here, everybody. Glad to have you all here with us. We are going to do a show, and um, I'm in a good mood for I don't know why. I have no reason to be. Just am. Good. Uh, well, it's hump day, Scott. Yeah, that's true. Although today's my busiest day. Today we celebrate day. Fergie and her lovely lady lumps. That's true. I get very I get very busy on Wednesdays. It's my busiest day, mm-hmm. most filled schedule. Yeah. Um, so I sh- I'm usually kind of in a crappy mood on Wednesdays because I just know what's ahead of me. But right now I'm feeling fresh, feeling fly. Cool. Is that the kids still good. say? They say they feel fly. Is that a... uh, not the good ones? Okay. Not the cool kids. Not the good kids. Uh, All right. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and Kim and Kim takes off tomorrow for another uh, Ugh, another yes. trip. So it's yes. Don't remind me. At it. Yeah, is she is she making you food? Like, is she going to prepare a stew that you can? Well, okay. Eat? So she's making food for like two hundred girls, and the food she's oh. making is this big stew. So it's funny you Which said is that. What she's all taking? That is funny. Yeah. So she's going to leave me a portion of it. <laughs> so that I at not least a, have something. Not a three or four day portion, I'm guessing. No, 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 no. Like it's probably enough for maybe one or two. But um Yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna it won't be good. Carter has promised that her and I are gonna go uh to like a store and buy like fresh ingredients for things and like cook stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way you describe it. We're gonna go to like a store <laughs> and buy like fresh ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like like you don't believe it yourself right like this is some alien idea that i've never yeah. uh, had any concept <laughs> of before in my life but yeah i'm i'm i mean I'm, I'm excited for the chance to maybe try to prove that we can do this while she's gone because a lot of people think it's sure. not possible like she leaves sure. and everything just goes to shit but i'm telling you right now we're gonna make this happen we're gonna cook well we're gonna eat well and then you're gonna be here on uh let's see you'll be here tomorrow and you'll be here friday to ch- to to you know hold me to the fire. See how things are going. Yeah, exactly. It's like your weight well, checks. Yes. And I'm gonna ask. If, I'm gonna ask of you the same thing because uh, Tina is going on one of her trips on Sunday, so she's gonna be gone for a few days. And oh so, boy. Oh boy. I'm already admitting that I'm you know, I'm I'm gonna eat well, but I'm not going to cook dinners because I'm probably going to I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that she's gone and and do as much rideshare driving as as i can oh yeah that's a good idea yeah don't uh, want to call it lifting uh, there's got to be a better term i'm gonna do some lifting gonna well, work on my core people that so say I swole i don't like i like it better than ubering that sucks yeah ubering sucks yeah, that's nobody, not a good one either nobody wants to say that yeah uh, driving yeah <laughs> yeah so i look i'm excited uh for uh not really i'm i'm dreading it because she's leaving. <laughs> i made all that up i'm not looking forward to it at all but she'll be home yeah. Saturday. It's not very long. She's on, gone. Oh, that's for, not bad at all. Okay. Yeah. It's Much like shorter than Tina's trip. Two, three days, something like that. Is she going back to um, New Mexico or what? She is. Yeah. I don't want to say where. Oh, yeah. We should probably be less specific about where she heads for things. Yeah. She has like a really but, important, uh, like highfalutin cool. Like, I know. It really makes the rest of us look like schlubs. Kind of. Like we yeah. just podcast. Lame. I know. I know. For those that are confused, yes, this is a podcast. It's not just a video. <laughs> Some people are confused right, by that, it would appear. Uh, I'm all right. so glad that Twitch stream has a podcast. <laughs> 
Oh, you know what we should do? Let's check in on our friends at the Morning Stream YouTube channel. Hold on. Oh, wow. Do you think uh, Todd and last Aaron. time we looked, Yeah. they were they were on the... Um... Oh, yeah, you can't look at Gebhardt Daily anymore because they've, they've branched out on their own. <laughs> oh, here it is. Uh, the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream, it's now called. Oh, oh wow. They changed the name. I'll bet. They, Dude. They, 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 they realized that the whole problem... <laughs> With people not watching their videos was the name. I think they changed it because of us and our people going over there and being all like trolly in their comments. I'll bet they did. Oh. They probably figured it out and went, oh, there's this other show with our name. Shoot, we should change it. Hey, we're leaving Gephardt anyway. Let's go do our own thing. Uh, let's see. Watch the latest show. I'm going to click it. Okay. Uh, recent shows, 7 9 19. That was yesterday. Yep. Okay, it's YouTube still. Are they still? It doesn't look like they're still doing it as a... Uh, Whoops. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, like they're still doing it at a desk. Looks like they're just doing it wherever. So right now they're... Well, right now they're in their kitchen. And she's... I mean, no offense. She's had work done. Hold on, since my last saw her. Welcome this, to the Todd yeah. and Aaron Daily stream. I have the towel over my shoulder, which means... Could be only one thing we're cooking. We're cooking today. Mexican, this is part of the salad Mex series. Mexican. It's called. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I feel like we got a little. We, we're fine over here at the morning stream. We don't need to worry about the daily stream. We're good. We are. Yes. Exactly. Oh man, I feel like we should pour one out. It's gone. No more morning stream from those guys. Damn. No more morning stream with Todd and Aaron. I wonder if Gebhart. Maybe maybe the reason it's not called that anymore is because uh, Gebhart Daily said nope. That's our name. You're not taking it. Could have been. And your three listeners. Could have been. Three yeah, all your three or four viewers. We're keeping them for ourselves. It's entirely possible. It's funny. There's only four or five views on this episode, or 18 views on this episode, yet they have 4.5 thousand subscribers. Whoa. Really? Yeah. Is it the same YouTube channel as before, or did that, uh, is this a new channel? It's, the, it's a new channel called Todd and Aaron Collard. Okay. <laughs> with a very... Uh, like collard greens kind of collard like or? i guess that's their last name collard oh i thought it was todd and aaron the todd and aaron daily stream and slc tawdry celebrity interviews quote i did not know that quote tell me something good prepper paranoia and life in the 801 those are segments those are segments i guess in the 801 we have two zip yeah. codes here or area codes i don't know why they just use that one we have 435 <laughs> as well they don't want to say uh, life in the 801 and or the fortune. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It doesn't roll off the tongue as much as just life in the 801. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck to them. I mean, I can't, you know, yeah. whatever. It's, I'm teasing them a little bit here, sure. but they got to do what they got to do. Be who you got to be. It's fine. There's people who are enjoying uh, them. And there's apparently like a really old photo of the two of them um, as the icon. How do you see the icon of their stream? Like it's. A little, oh, it's a can, little picture yeah. of uh, them kissing, and he's like covered with green paint or something. But clearly, compared to the video we just watched, this was maybe 30 years ago. Wouldn't surprise me. The heyday of those guys was yeah, 1985 <laughs> through like 87. That was like the, that's when they met, I think, or something. But also, they were on the same radio station, this 97.8 hot adult hits in the morning or whatever the hell it was. Uh, and they were, that was when they were, you know, that was the prime. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like 30, 35 years ago, something like that. Hey, none yeah, of us sure. are getting any younger, I can tell you that. I looked in the mirror this morning and was trying to check my, yeah. you know, goals. I got photos, too, by the way. These will never make it to the Internet, but I got photos of my process here, trying to get skinny. So I got some big fat guy photos from the first day, and, you know, we're slimming down uh -huh. a little. And now I had to do intermediate ones, and, whoo, man, just not the... Not the svelte, uh, skinny boy I used to be. Maybe maybe we need to have work done, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Do a little tuck here, a little, uh, little laser there. That's right. Should be fine. That's anyway, funny. I got an email. Oh, they have a read. weekly $100 gift card giveaway. Whoa, what? We don't even have that. Are you kidding me? No. How's that work? What do you, what do, you do to Aaron, win that? Aaron is the Comic-Con regular with celebrity chats and film and entertainment news. Be sure to enter our weekly $100 gift card giveaway. Everyone deserves a little extra luxury in their lives, and we're here to give it to you, Missy. Stick around. Let's be friends. Life is good here. Ugh. Why is oh, all that? Be sure to check out the Todd and Aaron Psychic Fair 
<laughs> at the Viridian Events Center. Oh, we've missed it. March twenty second, twenty nineteen. I think our, I think we would have, it would have been great to send you to the Todd and Eric. I would have loved that, here. dude. I know where the Viridian Center is. I could have gone to that. <laughs> Poof. We'll have to keep an eye out for the next Todd and Aaron Psychic Fair. I'd love it if we had a hundred bucks a week. We could just give people. That'd be awesome. Yeah. We don't yeah. have that. We need. If look, nope. if you guys want that, someone has to donate it, and then we'll. Someone do it. has to donate two hundred dollars a week yeah. for us to give away a hundred dollars a week. Icor says, "Where are they getting that kind of money from?" I don't know. They don't do. As far as I know, they're not on the air here anymore. There's no more drive time with Todd and Aaron. They're gone off mm -hmm. the radio radio. Yeah. So I don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. yeah they don't have sponsors on their site. I don't know. Brick says they don't have Nerdtacular. You're right. They don't. They and they don't. never will. <laughs> All right. Brian, anyway. I'm going I'm to read you an email. Yes. How's that sound? Please do. Okay. Please do. Here's one from Tom G. He says this. I just want to discuss this because I think it's interesting. Because I, I still don't understand it. Uh, so I may rant a little here. I don't know. I'm warning everybody. Okay. A little rant right. incoming. On TMS 1743, says Tom, a young contestant named Alexander called to play Babel Royale. After Alexander chooses who he thinks is going to win, Scott yells, quote, I love kids. Kids are the best. I'm so happy some kid called in and not some schlubby poop adult, unquote. Then Scott, this is all true. I did say all that. Uh -huh. Then Scott began to rant about how excited he is for the future because uh, future he is because kids like Alexander will fix it. I didn't say fix it. I just said, you know, they're future leaders of the world. They're kids like Alexander. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, images of Tom Cruise jumping up and down on Oprah's couch instantly played in my mind. <laughs> he says, stop acting like a freaking weirdo, Scott. Thanks for the show, Tom G. Now, I don't know how serious he is about that last line about me. Acting like a freaking the weirdo. On the couch. Oh, the freaking weirdo. Yeah, the last line. Yes. I still stand by the thing, and I don't think it was very Tom Cruise-y. I understand his point, and I got a little excited, but mm -hmm. uh, part of the part of uh, my opinion is part of society's overall problem is that we a don't give kids enough credit. We just sort of dismiss them as loud and noisy and smelly, and they're not gonna mm -hmm. do anything for anybody, and they're just gonna play Fortnite. Sideline and, them and, yeah, we just yeah. want to shove them over here. And then you know what? For generations, adults do this, and I just think that's dumb. And so I'm 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 countering it in the only way I can, which is I have a public voice, and I'm gonna say stuff. And I think kids are rad. So I don't know why that would bother anybody that I got excited about Alexander's future, because I think that kid is cool. I think here's my my thinking on it. If someone, if this was the first episode of TMS that somebody listened to, that might have caught them off guard. Anybody who's been listening for, for even a short little while, knows that you love kids and love, you know, uh, love love the excitement and and promise that they hold for an awesome future, and um, so it shouldn't surprise anybody. I, so I would think so too. So maybe Tom G is new. So Tom uh, G, welcome to the show. It's good to have you. Uh, boy, you're going to love Babel Royale when we get to it later. Well, I guess you just heard one. <laughs> it's all kids. Yeah. Name kids. How <laughs> many kids can you name? How many kids can you name? That's right. <laughs> Who's going to win and who should start? Right. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate the feedback nonetheless. All right. Uh, Brian, I, I heard you were on a podcast. Not this one. A different one. I was. Well, I was on this one, but I was on another one, too. Uh, Alex Albisu former contestant for America's Next Top Podcaster, uh, had me on his show, The Dad Chronicle, because I'm a chronicle. No, I'm a dad. That's it. Uh, and we talked about parenting. We talked about podcasting and parenting and um, exposing your child to music and the geeky things that you like and what's the best way to do that and uh, and all that sort of thing. I had a great conversation with him. He's he's a great interviewer, and it was a blast being on his show. So uh, if you go to thedadchronicle.com, then you'll hear my most recent or his most recent episode featuring me. And you were on there a while back, too, so why mm -hmm. not make it a, a TMS twofer mm -hmm. and listen to both of those episodes? Yeah, I, I think it was, he did a really good job. I mean, were you able to get past his voice, like his terrible uh, voice that he has? It took a good 20 minutes before I could, <laughs> like... Basically, what I would do is I had my finger on the volume switch, uh -huh. and I'd turn it down when he talked, <laughs> yeah. and kind of guess about what he was saying, and then and then turn it back up when uh, he'd get to. <laughs> that's awesome. We kid, we joke. He's not even here. He's not even here to hear. I know this. he's not even here, but uh, 
uh, Alex has Alex has a perfectly fine voice. And listen, this is coming from I have audio of of uh, Adam Curry making fun of my voice. Mm. So oh, yeah. Oh hey, this is Sidian has a good question. Should I read this? Sidian sometimes yes. just poking the bear, you know, just poking that bear. He says, nothing weird about Alexander Call. I remain unclear as to whether having a kid on the show violates Twitch's TOS. Hmm. The mm. terms of service. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, you just called yeah. in. If they call in, does that count? I don't know. Right. Like, if you're, if you're uh, I don't know, communicating with a world leader and one of your children comes in the room and walks in <laughs> like this. <laughs> Guy. in the background <laughs> i love that kid he's so good i forgot about that kid you do a really good version of that yeah that's that's one of my favorite <laughs> i want to enter more rooms like that too like yeah that's somebody clip that please yeah. <laughs> i need to gift that so if you could clip that that'd be wonderful uh well i don't know city and i have no idea We'll, we'll let yeah, that Sidian, one slide. If, I think if they're hosting a show, yeah, you got to worry about that. But I don't think you can. I don't think you can say, "Nope, no child shall ever appear on Twitch." Yeah, I've had a baby on here before. He's 20, yeah. 22 weeks oh, Sidian, old. I didn't hear you complain about that, Sidian. Yeah, so when I'm sitting here with yeah, his hold, holding him in my hands. And he's staring right at the camera. Nobody called that one out. Right. Anyway, also, who knows how old anybody is? Everyone fakes it. Yeah, that baby could be 13. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander could be 48. I don't know. He's got a weird voice for an old guy. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> Speaking of old guys, I have some at the end of the show I have to share, but I'll, I'll get to that when we get to oh, it. Good. Speaking of old guys, let's get Brian to... Oh, I guess we're not, we're not quite yet there. I, do wanna, I did want to just say Rip Rip. Now, if you wonder what that yeah. is, that's rest in peace, Rip Torn. That guy yeah. was super interesting. And everybody yesterday was all... Ah, uh, uh, I forgot his name. Who's that guy? Uh, who else died? Um, oh, Sanders? Ross Perot. Everybody's oh. like, ah, oh, Ross, Ross Perot, Perot yeah. Ross Perot. Poor Ross Perot. And I'm thinking, F that. There's a much bigger death. And it was Rip Torn. And he was cool. And he threw a wrench right in what's his name's face uh, in uh, in dodgeball. Never you forget. You can catch a wrench, you can catch a dodgeball. <laughs> it's so good in that. But he's just hey, great. Yeah. I'd miss that guy already. Bum and Larry up. Sanders' show is one of the best sitcoms ever ever created also one of the most influential wouldn't you say like, yeah yeah for sure do we even have things like arrested development without the larry sanders show no would. yeah i say no i say nay he was also the... he's the best guy to have in charge at the men in black place <laughs> that's right yes lots of things freddie got like fingered that... Like that, uh, Thist is bringing up Freddie Got Fingered. Sure, yeah, sure. I why mean, not? you know, if, when you're talking about your Tom Green films, it's right up there with <laughs> Road Trip. Yeah. yeah. What else you got from Tom Green? These uh, I made a brief appearance in one of the Charlie's Angels films because he was dating Drew Barrymore at the time, I right. believe. I think that's true. Mm -hmm. Boy, he was really dating up then. Now he's yeah. kind of—I don't know what he's doing now. Actually, I shouldn't say he's probably doing a podcast or something. He don't was, those guys uh, do that now? He was a contestant a couple or last summer or two summers ago on uh, Celebrity Big Brother. Mm. But I don't know if that counts for anything. I mean, it's I like something. I like Tom Green. I you know what? I think that uh, his brand of humor actually does crack me up. There were uh, there were moments back in the MTV times. Yeah, there were times like his weird show that he had on there. I I would laugh yeah. at that show. There were times. Yeah, I, I don't know that it, the movies were ever a place that he needed to be, but I think his talk show and his style of humor then was at least different and weird. And I would agree. Yeah, yeah, it was all right. I mean, I like. I mean, there is a whole there's a whole eight minute scene in Road Trip where he puts a snake in his mouth. I think. <laughs> yeah. To try and teach the snake how to eat. Or no, I guess he teaches. He's teaching. The snake how to eat a mouse so he puts a live mouse in his mouth oh my gosh i just remember the one where in the tv show he went out into the field and uh drank from a, a cow's teat oh, yeah. do you remember that right yeah he he was pretty absurd but these days my understanding is he's pretty chilled out and i think he has a podcast or something i don't think he does like show stuff anymore in movies it's perfect but, for a podcast right p f p Perfect for podcast. Perfect for podcast. 
a little like our friend Brian Dunaway, who I'm now adding. He's to the also program. perfect for prod, prod, prodcasting. Prodcasting. Broadcaster. <laughs> it's back, everybody. Prodcasting is back. All right, we're adding him to the call. We're going to play a little game. It'll be a good time if I can just find the clip. Here it is. <laughs> Everything's going off at once. Hey, All Brian Dunaway. The sounds. <laughs> are you there, buddy? Do, 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 do. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, pal. How are you? <laughs> Old... That's so funny because that's what that's what uh, Ibit gave me yesterday. He said, thanks, buddy. And I was like, thanks, partner. Yeah, I know you did. Oh, and, hi, Scott you know what? I mean, it, I mean it genuinely like, oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, I know. You say it like, you, it... say it like, like you just cut me <laughs> off in traffic. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it always it always feels like that. I, I do the same thing when my fiance calls me man. When she when she goes, ah, yeah. oh, stop it, man. I'm like, oh, so we're all there now, huh? Mm. We're not uh, we're not close anymore. It's just man. <laughs> I call. Uh, I actually buddy. only do it when I can't remember your name. I call I, Kim I'll, like, through a buddy or pal or chief. Do you guys call hey, your do you guys do you guys call your wives dude occasionally? Yeah, oh, yeah. Tall yeah all yeah, the time. I do, I do it but too. I don't really call him directly. I don't call her directly, dude. I do like a generalized statement. I'm talking out loud, dude. Yeah. Oh, she'll say like, hey, I guess what I made for room. dinner. I made your favorite thing for dinner, and you go, dude, like that. Dude. Right. Yeah. Or, dude, the cat just ran across my lap. Yeah. <laughs> Stepped on my crotch. But dude. I'll say things like, I'll say, she'll be across the room. I'll go, dude, hand me the thing. And I don't know if she likes it. Yeah. Uh, hey, Dunaway, I like oh, you. I have though. a lot of I have a lot of nicknames for my pets too, but we won't get into that. All right. Well, let's They're find all... out. Quit forcing, quit forcing your gender ideals on your wife, Scott. Yeah. Stop That's doing true. that, Scott. Hey, Dude check this or out. Do that. We have a <laughs> we have a uh, caller on the line. Hi, who's this? Well, good morning, gentlemen. It's Jessica from Southern California. How's it going? I'm great, Jessica. We're just going to assume Jessica. you were going to assume that you're over the age of 13, right? Yes, we need I to. Am, we need, I am we require... a month old in my wow. hand. She could need, need some context if she's not a listener of the show. <laughs> click, okay, click then. here on this button that says, yes, I am over 18. Yeah, if you push that, then we'll just believe you and everything will okay, be fine. Okay, good. All right, good. I felt I was. I, felt I was. No offense to our caller today, I was really hoping a toddler would call in today so that Scott could just totally lose his crap. But she's old. She's holding a little baby <gasps> right now. Oh, okay, so okay. it's all good. We got the young, we got the old, we got the middle, we got the untold. I was trying to rhyme. Didn't work. And well. there you have the oh. facts of life. They have the facts of life. You have the thing, but put it there, and then you go, and then you stare the facts of life. Is that how it goes? Wow, that's exactly that's what those are the words that Alan Thick wrote. Yes. Great. Oh, shut up! Alan Thick wrote that song. Yeah, I didn't you know, know that. Yeah. All right. Well, you think you think Robin Thick just came up with his musical skills uh, as air <laughs> skills? What happened to him? Where's he at? What's he doing now? You have that naked lady video. And uh, nothing. I think he's pretty much just deciding to lay low and keep cool. He was on that was, um, was cool. that masked singer uh, debacle. Oh. Oh. Yeah. show last year or earlier this year whenever it was, was but was he one of the singers he was one of the judges oh i didn't know he was involved in that any that, of that show was such a freaking train wreck there was one point at which i think jenny mccarthy thought that yeah. the person on stage wearing the mask was jenny mccarthy and then she realized it couldn't be because she was talking oh. <laughs> <laughs> shut up dude really <laughs> no not really but oh, it was that don't bad. forget, that don't forget to spay and neuter your kids Oh, that's what's great is I thought that could be real. That's how bad. <laughs> I think that might be Jenny McCarthy. No, wait, who said that? Wait, Jenny McCarthy said that. Oh, that can't be Jenny McCarthy. All right, don't forget, it's, never vaccinate your kids. Anyway. It's believable. <laughs> it's believable. All right, well, uh, well good to have welcome, you on. Jessica. Yeah, welcome to the show, Jessica. Sorry for all the banter there. Uh, hope you're doing well. How are you anyway? Doing great, doing great. Oh, well, good. Well, we're glad to have you here. Brian Ibbett's going to explain what this contest is, what you could win. And how it all works. Brian, take it away. Let's ride, Scott. Uh, uh, Jessica, I'm going to be giving Scott and Brian Dunaway a topic, and they're going to go back and forth with answers for that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, a repeated answer, or they hem and haw and procrastinate and take too long to come up with an answer, I haven't been very good about enforcing that, but uh, the win will go to the other player. Your job is to predict who's going to come out on top based on today's topic. Today, you are playing for the Batman Hush Collection which includes Hush, 
and other things. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll stuff some stuff in here. Here it is right here. Oh, yeah. Jeez, I just knocked oh, the world and, off the And that lamp that just fell and broke yeah. is also I think going to be yours. I think you should add an addendum to that, uh, the rules. And maybe instead of saying if they hem and haul too much, how about you say when it stops being entertaining, I'm cutting them off. Okay, fair enough. I okay, like yeah, yeah, I like that. I All like right, that. when they stop being, I like this. Uh, so yes, this is a great book, by the way. And shush. Yeah, and shush. And uh, Batman, uh, please be quiet. And yep. Batman, zip it. <laughs> and uh, Batman, uh, shut your pie hole. And uh, Batman, zip it. I would read that. So this was uh, written by Jeff Loeb in conjunction with Jim Lee and Scott Williams did some of the art, but Jim Lee did most of the art. It is an awesome book i love yeah. hush love it yes. i have the hu- i have that big uh collector hard thing somebody gave me that for a, a gift but this is uh part of oh, and i didn't i have his name where's his name oh, i forgot who gave us these sorry dude i will give you full credit i apologize oh jeff <laughs> uh, sorry scott williams inked You're alfred right. alfred is kicking his radio right now anyway it's it is one of my favorite comics uh collections it's the big old thick one and it can be yours. Plus, I'm going to stuff a bunch of stickers and prints in there if you win. So that'll be cool. Just random pages will have a sticker covering a piece of important art. Yeah. Important point, the plot points of the story will be covered by a, a horde logo. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, no, what happens to uh, Poison Ivy? I can't tell. <laughs> anyway. All right. So that's the uh, prize. But, of course, they need a topic to be able to do anything uh this one comes into uh, comes to us from carl gibbons Ooh. who um who uh is not peter piper carl carl gibbons but does like his peppers um i've got in front of me the scoville heat unit scale the shu to to some people to people in the know mm. um which goes all the way from uh like a carolina reaper at 2.2 million Scoville heat units all the way down to a bell pepper which has zero Scoville units. I'm not going to make you go all the way up to like the Naga Viper or the Trinidad Scorpion or the New Mexico Scorpion, but I want to know how many of these you can name starting under 1 million Scoville units. The 1, 1 million, million Scoville, yeah, the 1 million Scoville units is the but Jalokia, or otherwise known as the ghost pepper. Uh, the I want to know everything uh, between the ghost pepper and the bell pepper okay. on the Scoville scale. I like the range. That's good. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, so, <clears throat> Jessica, knowing that that's the topic, and knowing that both of these guys like their peppers, who do you think is going to win, and who do you want to go first? Oh, this is a tough choice, because both Scott and Brian seem like they know equal amounts on the range of peppers here i'm gonna say or lack of knowledge thereof god mm-hmm. to win brian go first okay scott to win brian to go okay. first all, all right. right brian let me get this straight right. okay so we're we're going under what pepper are we going under under uh, ghost. the ghost pepper the ghost pepper is the top the top of the scale um, that okay. i want you to go for. and and no and no low end no, it's all low end. No, I mean bell bell yeah. pepper is zero, so anything above zero Scoville units. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. 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 There's none Very less low. than zero, right? <laughs> right. There's nothing. I'll go less with. I'll zero. go with. I'll go with. Was I first? Is that right? Yeah, okay, you're so first. You are first. I'm going. I'm going with uh, the one of the most popular peppers out there. Little, pretty spicy, even for me. The jalapeno. Ah, very good. The yeah, jalapeno, yeah. or as they say, jalapeno. Jalapeno. <laughs> jalapeno. Uh, 2,500 Scoville units all the way up to 8,000 Scoville units. I'm growing them upstairs in my kitchen. Jalapenos, and we're off to the races. All right. Uh, let's throw in the poblano. Poblano peppers. Uh, mm-hmm. Believe it or not, under the jalapeno. I thought they were, initially I thought they were higher. Uh, One to 2,000 Scoville units on the poblano pepper. All right. Habanero. <laughs> is, that, is that like the Canyon Arrow? Yeah, it's like the Canyon Arrow, <laughs> like up the Simpsons. I most of my knowledge about peppers is actually from the Simpsons in the episode where Homer loses his mind. Oh, I love that one. And the, yeah, and that's the, a great one. Yeah, the wolf. Uh, Johnny Cash wolf voiced that wolf. Right. Yeah, it was Johnny I think Cash. So, that's right. Yes. It was amazing. One of the best episodes they ever made. Um, yes, the habanero goes all the way from 150,000 Scoville units to 575,000 Scoville units, available both in orange and red Savina varieties, the habanero. 
pepper. All right. That um, will burn your butt. Let's go with the Anaheim pepper. The Anaheim pepper. It might have a different uh, name. Does it have a different name? I only know it, it as not. the Anaheim. Nope, it's called an Anaheim pepper. Okay. Uh, 500 to 1,000 points, <coughs> or uh, Scoville units, and um, uh, it'll cost you at least one e-ticket to enjoy the Anaheim pepper. <laughs> But they have an app, so you can fast pass on there <laughs> they have quickly. An app so you can fast pass the Anaheim pepper. Ugh, I don't want to fast pass a pepper. <laughs> you don't want to fast pass any pepper. No. All right, Brian. How about the Kanye? The Kanye? What? <laughs> it's, not... <laughs> it's not pronounced that. It's... I can't say it. <laughs> Kanye pepper. You Kanye mean, is, is you like mean Kanye. Y... Kanye pepper, yeah. What's it? It's not, it's not called. Kanye, though. What's no, it it's Kanye. Oh, Kanye. Kanye. Kanye, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, like, for some Kyan reason, I couldn't pepper. get it out of my head <laughs> that it was pronounced the other way. I couldn't, uh, couldn't get my brain around it. Okay, that's very Kanye. good. Yes, the Kanye, Kanye Kardashian pepper <laughs> is also very good. Um, 30,000 to 50,000 Scoville units on the Cayenne pepper. Really? Not if you get it in your nose. Uh, no. Uh, no, don't do that. Don't well, snort no. Cayenne it pepper. Still has, if you get it in your nose, you'll know it. It's still, yes. uh, you know, hot and all. Um, I'm going to say the, um, I mean, I'm going with all the basics here because I don't know the fancy ones very well. So I'm going to say sure, the uh, anything, yeah. banana peppers. Aren't those uh, oh, a thing? That's interesting. Banana peppers are a variety. Like oh. hot banana uh, peppers. Hold on. There's some hot ones. I get them on pizza. Yeah. I'm going to give you banana peppers because they are, um, they are also known, well, they are also known. See, I don't want to give this one away because it's a different one. But yes, all right, banana peppers, we're going with because uh, because they kind of fit between these other two. They're mm. kind of like this one, but they're not exactly. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you the one that they're kind of like. <laughs> um, the banana pepper, uh, zero to five hundred Scoville heat units. Oh, oh. yeah, because mm. there are there are a number of those you can get, and some are hotter than others. I think. Right. Correct. All right. Brian, that is the same hmm. way. <laughs> he's, Enter he's, entertainment he's, level is going fast, <laughs> so I better. I think you're like. I better get on it. You're doing like mem taste memory or something over there. You're trying to remember right. some thing you had in your mouth. I want to see. See, that's the, that's the thing. It's like it. What's the, it's the red pepper, but it's not just called red pepper. I mean, because. Maybe right, because we already said the green pepper, which kind of makes it a class of that. Maybe it's but called it's not that the same pepper. That's not the red pepper I'm thinking of. Anyway, I'm thinking of the uh, the hot sauce yeah. pepper they use. Oh, is it? <laughs> what is? What do they call the red pepper they put in Tabasco sauce? What do they call it? Uh, oh, yeah, what do they call that? Yeah, dirty, mm. dirty Tabasco pepper. I have no idea. Red, red, red sauce pepper. Red sauce pepper. Red sauce pepper. That's a red name sauce pepper. of a thing. Are you kidding? No, I could not give you red <laughs> sauce pepper. <laughs> Come I'm on. Sorry. No, and here's the thing, is um, uh, like red, like red hot chili peppers. <laughs> right, right. Uh, actually, make up a bunch of different kinds. Actually, um, oh. yeah, red hot chili peppers kind of includes. Oh, I heard jalapenos, baby. New Mexico chilies, and cayenne peppers. Um, so, no, I cannot give that to you. I have uh, one left. Scott wins. Can I tell you the one I had left? It's the only other yeah, one yeah, I yeah. know. Uh, First, that's yep. for Brian. Uh, what I, uh, Serrano or Ser Sereno, Serrano, 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 very good. Eight to 22,000, uh, Scoville heat units. Here are the other ones you can mention. Now, banana peppers are often confused for pepperoncini peppers, uh -huh. but they are separate. They are different. That's, that's why I had to look it up to kind of, to make sure that banana peppers were different um variety than pepperoncini right. uh your guajillo peppers serrano manzano, manzano uh thai manzano. chilies thai chili uh, da da -til, uh d a t i l are 100,000 to 300,000 and those are all the what? ones that are under a million wow do you guys watch that uh youtube series uh where the 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 guys get there with different artists and they start out with low level yes peppers this, and they this increase is the one, what's it called the, uh, this is the one called um oh 
The one that had bring Gordon the heat. Ramsay. The bring the heat, maybe? Oh, oh hot hot something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hot I want, watch hot, watch, one. hot ones. It Watching is, Gordon Ramsay yes. eat uh, that stuff was the funniest damn thing I'd ever seen. It was really good. I think it was the second yeah. funniest because the one with uh, Shaquille, where oh, I missed he it. gives this look, like he takes a bite of this pepper, and then he gives this look to the camera like right. oh crap <laughs> i haven't seen that i'll have to watch this i totally well, what pepper that. is it what pepper is in the uh tabasco sauce in those things <laughs> why are you laughing uh, tabasco, <laughs> i'm laughing because when you, you don't do a know search, is, it, is it like 11 no. herbs and spices what is it when you do a search yeah exactly captain kipper just put a link in the chat room when you do a search for shack s-h-a-q hot ones the face he makes is the first thing that comes up <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. I'm going to have to watch that. Um, well, what kind of peppers are those uh, Tabasco? Yeah. Tabasco sauce peppers. They're what not the those? they're not the hot cherry ones, are they? Cuz I think those are No, no, no. Hotter than But they're not called I don't think they're called Are they called Tabasco peppers? Oh, I don't no, know. That's, oh, the, you, that's just the brand name, right? I just realized I can't watch this because last time I showed a popular YouTube channel on the stream, oh, I got yeah. banned that day, so, so. I just realized I can't do that. Sorry. Yeah, they're called Tabasco peppers. They're not what? on my list. Are they really? Yeah. Come on. I, no, I'm I'm serious. I'm trying to see if there's a different name that would be on this list, but they are they are called Tabasco peppers. This this really? list may not be very complete, and it's one of these that you want to hang up in your in your kitchen that's got like, you know, the little thermometer on the left side oh, showing man. you all the um uh the, the the heat ranges and stuff like that but that's surprising uh yeah it's the only variety of chili pepper whose fruits are juicy in other words they're not dry on the inside wow that's <laughs> also is juicy on the inside weird, <laughs> weirdly this is like this is like gushers yeah that's weirdly gross yeah. although i said grosh anyway grosh. hey uh, jessica from southern california congratulations you've won oh you know what fletcher has a thing to say for you hold on here you go, right here. Congratulations, you're, you're a the winner. winner. Uh, this will ship out to you ASAP, and uh, you deserve it. Nice. Uh, thanks for picking me, too. Thanks for your confidence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. thanks for winning, and uh, the 13-month-old giggled while we were playing, oh, so he appreciates it as well. That's awesome. That. 13 Yay. months is such a good time. All right, well, have a fantastic time. We'll see you later, and congratulations. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell her. Email me your address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Go to the site or use Scott at frogpants.com and I'll hook you up. Uh, uh, that, someone... was a, that was a good one. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed that. Yeah. That was a good one. You kind of made me hungry for pepper things. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. expect that. And, and yeah. my, what's a pimento? Can someone help me with that? A pimento <laughs> is a pepper, but it's a sweeter pepper that um, you pickle and shove into an olive. I was about to say, you shove them into spicy. an olive. Okay. Yeah, I don't, think they're, I don't think they're on the Scoville. Yeah, we took the seed out of the olive. What should we shove in its place? How mm. about a, um, a pepper? And a roasted pepper is just roasted peppers of whatever kind you want, right? Like, right, exactly. So it's no such thing. Um, it's just a roasted pepper. I'm gonna, be a, I'm gonna be a pepper expert by the next time we get on. Oh, uh, did you know that they're they're better known as pimientos? No. P i m i e n t o as no. opposed to pimento. No. Um, Sounds like we Americans bastardized it or something do you guys do you guys eat pimento cheese is that a is that a yeah i mean it exists not, regional, okay i was, I was making, sure, making sure it wasn't a regional thing oh, because okay. i was gonna say pimento cheese and like what it, no it's it's a it's a thing we have but i refuse to Mayonnaise, eat it because that's gross uh, sharp shredded cheese uh pimento peppers <laughs> lasar just pimento is a pepper and then he links to pimento no no i'm not arguing with it being a pepper it's uh it's not. It's, it's not on the it Scoville doesn't register scale. on the Scoville scale because right. I think it is below zero. It's it's or at zero because it's like basically a, a bell pepper. And everything right. we did today had to be above zero and below the ghost. Is how that worked, right? Ghost, ghost Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, pimento loaf is gross and never should be eaten by anyone. No, I agree. Anything mm. with the word loaf except yeah. for bread. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Olives, well, yeah. all right, meatloaf. I'll give you meatloaf. How I'll about, um, meatloaf. Uh, wait, there's another kind of loaf. Oh, what's another kind of loaf? Beef loaf. Uh, the Reaper's higher than the one that Brian yeah, was Yeah, Carolina Reaper was uh, uh, well, way high up on the list. I think that's one I said to at the beginning, you did, wasn't you it? You did, you did. Carolina Reaper, yeah. yeah. Now, is that is that Carolina Reaper? I wonder... I've, 
I've never looked it up. Is that because of South Carolina and North Carolina? Did we? Are that ours, or is that some somewhere else? Uh, I wonder. I think down Let's there. See. And see up here, a guy in a big black cloak with a scythe takes you away when you die. Down yeah, there, a yeah, little, a little, pep, a little pepper, a little pepper yeah, named Steve. Uh, that's Steve. We call him Steve around here. Oh, I He's thought it was Bubba. Cool. All right, well, who knows? oh, is it Bubba? No, that's that's so that's so. Rock uh, Hill, South Carolina, wrong. originally what? bred in Rock Hill, South Carolina, <laughs> by Smoked and Ed Curry, proprietor of the Rock Pucker Hill. Butt Pepper Company in Fort Mill. Hold on, Pupper. I went give to, me that I went name. To Rock Hold on. Hill and saw Helmet. Give me that, that name awesome. one more time. What was that name? Smoke and Ed Curry, proprietor of the Pucker Butt Pepper Company. Pucker, Pucker Butt. Butt Pepper Company. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my gosh. Now hold on. And you went and saw who? Helmet you saw there? Helmet. Yeah, some how, helmet. How was Helmet? Helmet was amazing. This was back when they had their like their Betty album out. That was a great album. Oh my gosh, I've not heard anyone. I was mosh pitting. It was great. Some I've not heard anyone say the the name of the band Helmet in about as long as I've heard Helmet, which was like thirty years ago or something. That's right. Congratulations and well done. I think we need to. How far is Fort Mill from you, uh, Brian? Not far. Maybe like a, maybe like an hour. If that if that really. Far. I think we yeah. need to. Uh... To do a visit? We need to send you over to the Pucker Butt Pepper Company. Mm. Absolutely. And uh, we'll, we'll spring that. for we'll spring for some you know we'll we'll send you some money to get us some uh, um, some I, hot sauce products. I got it too. covered. I think. I don't think the I, I doubt it's gonna be like. I got it. I got this. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I'm looking at the yeah. website. Um, our pepper yeah, mash heats up. One of their the hot food. sauces is called Reaper Squeezins. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude! Really, my butt is puckering. Voodoo Prince Death Mamba. Look at all those hot sauces. Bacon me crazy with bacon in it. Oh, Brian! One called I dare you, stupid. With a T. I dare you, stupid. I am going to order some of this right now. They have online sales here. You can buy it online. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Why? Why make Brian Dunaway have to? Yeah, what is this? Early 19th century? Over. Like we got to because, exactly. because what, what's a better story? Oh, look what well, came in the true. mail today. And, and actually, it would be kind of fun to get you in in there with a microphone, right? And, uh, and talk to the proprietor of the proprietor. Of the is he pr proprietor? Yeah. As he gives me samples, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yes. Oh, you'll have a case of the samples. I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm looking for the pucker butt. Somebody needs to send us. Well, if, if so, somebody in the chat. Who was it? Oh, Gidget says there's something down there that's super hot. All right, Gidget, we're open. Sure. Send your Australian yeah, nightmare. Hot sauces in Australia probably kill you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna die. You're just gonna die. You're just gonna die. We're gonna eat that and go, oi, mate, and then die. Or no, that's not them. <laughs> <laughs> something Sorry. like that. All right. Well, Dunaway, you've you've, right. you've proved yourself once again today to be the guy who didn't win. Good, good job. Well done. Bye. All right. He's gone. All right. Thanks. Well, knowing what we know now, let us dive into the following program idea, which is the news. Here it is. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. It's the news, and it is brought to you by... Brought to you by Coverville, where today we're just going to kind of keep things simple, keep things soft, and keep things Suzanne. Yes, Simple Minds, Soft Cell, and Suzanne Vega, uh, lead singers of those two bands, as well as Suzanne Vega, all celebrating birthdays right around now. So let's combine them all into one show. Of course, you're going to hear stuff like Tainted Love, which wasn't originally done by Soft Cell. Surprise, surprise, for a couple people in the audience. Uh, Suzanne Vega's Luca, you'll hear a version of that. Of course, Simple Minds. Don't you forget about me. You'll hear versions of that, uh, as well as covers by all three of those artists. Uh, check it out, Coverville.com, or uh, watch us, watch me stream it live. Do it live! At uh, twitch.tv slash Coverville at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, right there at uh, twitch.tv slash Coverville. I'll yeah. send it again. Make it an afternoon. Watch that at 1. Come back and watch DTNS at 2.30. Uh, I'm on that. 2.30. Perfect. And then come back later after go have dinner. Come back for core at seven, and then watch okay. uh, the core guys play video games. It's a full day of content. There you go. Uh, all right, I'm going to share a website with the chat real quick. Here you go, chat room. And I'm going to read this uh, this article because this is freaking gross, okay. and I would die if I saw this. An alien bug found in a man's home looks exactly like the Stranger Things monster. <laughs> oh god the demogorgon the demogorgon or whatever that is and there's more aren't there in the se in the two seasons after first they get weirder like they're bigger and more yeah there was the um what was it in the second season there was something else 
Um, Some kind of like yeah. long. The Mind Flare. That's right. The Mind Flare was the second season. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, and that's probably what this one is looking like. Yeah. Uh, so it says here, you spot something terrifying on the corner of your eye. Something so terrifying, in fact, it looks like it came right oh. out of Stranger Things. This is the reality for one man in Bali. That's in uh, Indonesia. Uh -huh. Recently, after an alien-like insect made itself a home in his house uh, one evening, crawling across the ceiling with a care uh, without a care in the world. Uh, if you take a look at it, you'll see it. Uh, yikes! The bizarre creature baffled residents after it was spotted by homeowner Hari To. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, on June 17th, and no one understanding where it could possibly have come from, To wondered where or uh, whether it might have been looking for a safe place to stay because it had been rainy that night. His home was the first place that it stumbled upon. So as you can see, this thing is this, weird. I'm going to hit play on this video. Is it? it, it this is real? It's this supposed thing? to be real, this thing. I mean, this. I did some ch checking. It, yeah. It, it, best I can tell, 100% real. With those freaking legs? Yeah. Those, those freaking appendages? Yeah. With the weird fuzz all over Ugh. them? Yeah. Oh, no. No, no, no. It's like some kind of weird hair. Oh my god, it like like it retracts them like fingers. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other part of it is like a giant I don't know, flying insect looking body, but then upside down yeah. it's like got these tentacle almost things, hairy leg tentacle things. I mean, I would I would die. You know what I would do? I would immediately kill that thing. Like Yes. I'm not even going to yes. hesitate and I don't even like killing animals uh, or creatures. Uh yeah. That's uh Right, that is uh, really disturbing. They're like the tendrils have little hairs on them or something. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is not. Uh, yeah, and it says it says that. Uh, let's see, according to sciencealert.com, the night nightmare moth is completely real, and the internet is not impressed. Meaning they all think it's fake. It's real. It's real. Wait, the internet is not impressed. Yeah, meaning we all think uh, too many people think it's just faked. But the truth oh, is, it's real. It's real. Um, here's a, yeah, here's that's a Snopes, uh, here's a Snopes oh, article. There's a better picture of it. Huh. The Snopes article oh. says, uh, "Let's see." Oh yeah, look at that thing. Yeah, that thing's legit. Yeah, Ooh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> boy, when you see it, when it's got <laughs> a smaller a smaller photo than the one that that guy, the video that the guy posted. Jeez, but those things are huge. Like uh, some of these photos, those little tendrils go, uh, they, they're massive. Yeah. Yeah. That, that feels like, it feels like um, I'm okay with some of these species going extinct. That's okay. <laughs> like, it's all right if we wipe these out. Yeah, these are, these are okay if they leave. I mean, it's kind of pretty in one shot. Look at that thing. But only in the wild and not near me anywhere. Wow. Jeannie's not looking. <laughs> Jeannie it. won't look. I don't blame you, Jeannie. This oh, is Oh uh... man. That's that's hardcore, dude. Hardcore. Yeah. All right, well. All right. There's that. Um, <laughs> no. Nope. All right. Uh well, moving on. Let's do this story. Uh okay. uh there's uh you know we talked about all these people licking ice cream and putting it back. Yeah. Stop it. And Stop it, people. It's going. It's getting worse. Louisiana man now facing charges for licking ice cream at the store. There's another incident of someone licking the ice cream uh, at Assumption Parish Sheriff. Assumption, I guess, is the parish. That's a cool name. Assumption. Assumption. Oh. Assumption. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That's weird. That is weird. Assumption Parish. Because usually people are, those things, parishes are named after people usually. Because so. when you live in Assumption, you make an ass out of you and me. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Well, that's what happened here. He posted a video of himself on Facebook eating a Blue Bell, another Blue Bell ice cream container. That seems to be the brand everyone's going for. He licked it. Probably because it, it doesn't have a, a little plastic safety wrap thing on it. Oh, right. That's a good point. Uh, he yeah. poked it with his finger. He licked it, and then he stuck it back on the shelf. This is 36-year-old Lenise Martin III, charged Sunday with uh, property tampering and posting criminal activity. Uh, police Commander Lonnie... Cal Calavera Cavalier. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I even owned a Cavalier briefly. I should know this. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I should know this. I played. Uh, I played uh, forward for the. Uh, oh, the, the Cleveland, Cleveland Cavaliers. Cal yeah. The Calaviers. 
Oh, man, I really like that. I like their chances next year, the Calaviers. I think they're going to do great. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. This, oh, um, okay. Deputies found Martin at the scene showing the sales clerk a receipt showing he bought the ice cream he licked. Deputies searched the freezer and confirmed the purchase, but still decided to move forward with the charges. Uh, earlier this month, a teen in Texas was shown an online video taking ice cream from a Walmart freezer, removing the top of the lid, and then putting it back, or licking it and putting it back. We talked about that one. But apparently these things happen all over the place. And now there's just people faking it. There are people who are going in, doing a video of them really? licking, licking it, putting it back. And then as soon as the video gets turned off, they take it and go buy they it. They go buy it. Yeah. But you'll still get busted for uh, for the video part, or at least according to this guy's case, because they're still going to charge him. Because he did that. Mm -hmm. So right. everyone I mean, stop doing were, it. If you were Bluebell... Wouldn't you uh, press charges because these people are basically preventing people from wanting to buy Bluebell because of their stupid action? Yeah, they're they're besmirching the name of Bluebell. I agree. Yeah, I'd want yep. I'd want to do something, or maybe Bluebell just needs to put like a safety thing on their deal or something. I think. Well, they probably should do that anyway, but still. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, say something for me because you're suddenly slow. Like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like, I'll talk normally. <laughs> Not that slow. But... Wow. Well, that wasn't a very nice thing to say, no, Scott. No, I, I just mean you're, you're like, your voice is suddenly like slowed down. It's weird. Do you hear it? Uh, how about that weird bug, man? Jeez. Do you guys, <laughs> do you, do you guys, do you guys hear that? Do you hear him slowing down? Am it's I, not just me. Am I slowing down? Really? Yeah, you got like a, hey... What's going mm. on? It's me, Brian. Like like the way we did when we made Trump all slow. It sounds like that. Yeah. I'm looking and I don't... The only thing running right now is Discord Helper. I mean, the, the thing that's that's got priority is Discord Helper, which... Um, I have no I idea. Know, do you want me to disconnect and reconnect? I don't know. Uh, here, let me... You know what? Let me try something. Yeah. This is always fun. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go central and then back to west back to the okay now how all about, right how about now talking i'm talking yeah you're not as, you're slow? not as slow that was weird that's weird i've that's never really weird. heard that before that was no funky. that's a new one yeah well, i enjoyed it uh we're gonna take a break when we come back we will spend some time with tom Merritt and talk about technology we will also have nicole on do our recommendals today i have one that i love but i don't know if i ever recommended it before but if i didn't i don't care because i'm still gonna recommend it uh, so we're getting to that here in a minute. Before that, though, a song break with Brian Ibbett and his song yeah. break. So this is uh, this is a guy called Frolicious, and there's very little information about Frolicious uh, that that got sent to me. Um, he is from Chicago. We know that he uses electronic music. He's uh, uh, he actually even performs live with real instruments such as drums, piano, and even singing. Um, he doesn't follow a specific subgenre in EDM, which allows him to be versatile. Uh, boy, there just isn't a lot to find, but you can find him on Spotify and his brand new album is called dance to anything. This is the title track. And I absolutely dig this. And I dig this, this bizarre, this bizarre eighties vibe of his uh, artwork and his promotional materials. Here is the song dance to anything by Frolicious. Hello, I'm a murder king, I'm a murder king, I'm a murder king, just eating lunch. You elected me your leader. Follow me now. Ha. From the 2010 Best of Booty Collection, this is The Morning Stream. watched that episode of uh, TNG a little while ago. I did as well. Uh, well, yeah. you got me. You did it. It's your fault. So you said, yeah. oh, I was sick and I watched a lot of TNG and I went, well, I'm not sick, but I'd sure like to have something on in the background. So I've been watching that because it's the most it's the easy because I've seen it a billion times. Right. Oh, so yeah. just yeah. having it play and like knowing it's there and Picard walking around going, where's there? Where's there? you know, it's just a good time. Yes, it really is. Yeah. I uh, I skipped my first like I actually jumped from the middle of an episode to the next episode for the first time since I've been binging it. Yeah. It was uh 
I think it was called Sins of the Father or something like that. Basically, it was a Worf episode, Worf and his honor, and and uh, oh yeah, all that stuff. Uh, having to go do the the court thing, and I want you to be my chadish, <laughs> Captain Picard. I kind of hate the Worf episodes. I wish <sighs> they were better. But... I don't know which is worse: the holodeck Sherlock episodes or the Worf episodes. How about Sherlock episode with Worf in it? That's pretty bad. That's right. Uh, and by the way, and, yeah. and Dice Tomatoes 100% correct, Tony Todd is Worf's half brother in that episode. Yeah. He's also uh, old Jake Sisko in a uh, DS9 episode as well. It's all right. Kind of cool. It's all over that hey, thing. look what we got here. With the computer, as with any tool, the concept and direction must come from the man. That man is Tom Merritt, and he's here like he is every Wednesday. Hi, Tom. I am. I am. No, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rumors are the rumors are true. You are Tom Merritt, and you are I, I, here. I'm fully awake. Okay, I'm, I'm right here, <laughs> mesmerized by the Christmas lights on your shelf in the background. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, uh, look at those. Hey, I I I know the big tech news today is the Nintendo Switch Mini, but I was just spending a lot of time talking with my wife about her experience at the Lion King premiere last night. Oh, oh. we should talk about this because I'm very excited yeah. about that movie. And you're not. This isn't just Tom is here to pimp the thing he may need the most to, to climb up the ranks. I am the going to win draft. the movie draft now. <laughs> okay. Right. Are you? This is official I'm now. I'm calling it. Yeah, okay. I called it on, on yesterday's spoiler in time uh, on the Court Killers. That'll be coming out uh, on the main feed tomorrow. I am uh, I am I'm feeling like The Lion King is going to push me over the top. Wow. Let's see. How much do you need? You need uh, like $325 million. You need The Lion King really to to kick butt needs Lion to be gonna make ladder. north of 400 million i think he's right really? i i hate to say this i think he's right like yeah i, I think the potential's yeah. there and the early the the last night early uh buzz out of everybody who's been to the premiere or seen it earlier or whatever which i guess eileen's one of those oh. uh yeah it are the most glowing i've heard anyone talk about a movie this year so it's i'm nervous brian wow. i'm right. nervous and so the lion king is not really people in the chat room are asking if it's it's not out it's not even out in la no, it was no. the premiere right. so this is the red carpet where they show it to the to the press and the cast and they have little parties and all of that uh and my wife works for rotten tomatoes so sometimes she gets to go to those things which is really cool for her mm -hmm. um but uh it, it is not out until a week from thursday right mm -hmm. july 19th uh I guess. Yeah, there it is. July 19th. No early reviews yet. It's still under embargo outside of just people can do Twitter reactions and junk like that. Um, but mm -hmm. actual reviews are still embargoed. But I think it looks great. And the the big talk I'm hearing is that visually it's next level stuff. Like mind-blowingly like, uh-oh, new new bar has been raised, everybody. If you want to wow. make your, uh, your hyper-realistic CG, welcome to, you know, next welcome next level. Welcome to the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, the the general reactions are super positive, uh, and uh, you put that together with the fact that it's got uh, record-setting pre-sales for a Disney movie. Uh, for Disney movie, we're not talking about Avengers Endgame, which is a Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. We're talking about like in in the the more narrow Disney uh, universe. Uh, it's got uh, these these positive. Uh, positive, not reviews yet, but but you know, positive reactions coming from the preview showings to the press. Uh, you also have no competition for it, family movie wise. It's got wide appeal. There's nobody out there, you know, saying this. Yeah, I'm not going to see this because I don't like cute animals hmm. or anything. No. Uh, so, you know, it's. Uh, I think it's kind of set up for success. I think so too. I mean, again, if if Aladdin can pull just over 300 million. Then Lion King will absolutely surpass that. So, oh yeah, guaranteed. Uh, you might have us. And that and that damn Endgame re-release with the extra deleted scene <laughs> stuff really did not pan out. I think out we all much. overreacted. Like, oh, everybody's gonna go back, but then yeah. I didn't go back. I did you go, go back? back. No. Nope. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think they marketed it so poorly that I forgot it was doing it, even though I was invested in doing it. Like, I just, they just didn't I, say I anything. wanted to go back. Eileen's like, I don't really need to see it again just for extras. And then I read what the extras were, and I'm like, eh, that's a lot of time to put yeah, yeah, I can is, watch exactly. those on the, on the digital release. It's true. I'll just sneak into that theater uh, after I see something else, like Lion King. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I, 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 I mean, as much as I would love to retain our top spot, part of me is also excited that you may you might actually have the big chance this year 
to like knock well, us out. Well, you know, the the team to beat. Uh, no disrespect to Team Frog Pants is is Team John Trucker. Mm. Uh, they they yeah. they are. <clears throat> really sitting pretty with Toy Story 4 still got still with money to make uh and it chapter 2 is going to make a couple hundred million plus right mm-hmm. so uh it it will be close i think yeah i, I think it'll be closer than we all thought but Brian i still i'm still not going to worry hakuna matata <laughs> It means no it worries. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> For the rest of your day. I'm very excited about this. I, For actually, the rest of the draft. Gen- genuinely, like, super stoked about this. I found out that there's a... Well, it's a long story, but my for my birthday in a couple of weeks, the family had to reveal that they were going to have this secret whisk me away thing happen. And the reason they had to is oh, long no. and complicated. I don't want to get into why, but basically I was trying to make arrangements for another thing that would have had me flying out of town. And they're like, um... You can't do that. We have like unrefundable like plans. You have to let them know. So anyway, long story short, uh, we're we're doing that, but I don't think we're anywhere near a movie theater that weekend, which really Mm, bums my cheese because I was I'm very much I want that to be my birthday movie. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why I'm so excited about a live action remake of The Lion King, but I have been since they announced it. I'm super jazzed about it. Live, I know live action. The trees are real. Yeah, the the, the lots of location shooting and stuff like that. So it's live easy. vegetation. Right. <laughs> but apparently it is so visually cohesive and, and well made that it's just going to make us all lose our minds. And I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, all right. Yeah, I, I mean, the, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to speak for Eileen. And, and I know there's certain things that that probably would get her in trouble. I, I don't really know what the NDA uh, things are, but. Suffice to say, she thought it was really good, and and her coworkers that she went with uh, thought it was really good. So yeah, easy enough for me to believe it will be very good. Uh, Do you want to talk about the Switch Mini? Did yeah, you guys talk sh- about that? We haven't yet. The we probably switch. should. Yeah, we should call it the because <laughs> yeah. it's it's actually consistent with their previous naming conventions. The DS went through an iteration called the DS Lite, and that was very popular. Um, this is interesting though because it's kind of rendered it its name no longer useful like the the whole name of switch was you switch from portable to yeah tv and you right. don't do that anymore this thing is not have an option for that there's no cable that does it it the, the switch means i'm switching to not having options right you're having a it's a portable solution or it's a portable switch that is a hundred percent portable and no tv involved yeah. um in theory if you've got uh one of these over there but one of my um uh pro controllers those will bluetooth to the device uh that's not been confirmed but one would think so at least i hope so uh yeah i mean we're sort of backing into this Uh, i've read several outlets say that yes you'll be able to use the joy con uh controllers with it but uh if anybody hasn't heard the switch mini will not support a tv dock you can't take the joy cons off and so therefore the left joy con will just have a standard d-pad on it uh it'll be a tiny bit smaller uh a 5.5 inch screen instead of a 6.2 inch screen 0.61 pounds instead of 0.88 it's Mm -hmm. a tiny bit lighter uh and it supposedly will get 20 to 30 percent more battery life but otherwise uh support all the games and everything that you would have on a switch for somebody who wants to pay only 200 dollars for a switch and also wants to just use it portable yeah uh it, it, that you we could talk all day about the name we could talk all day about the kind of the psychological effect of yeah but now it's less i don't want something that doesn't have what the other one has and my response to people and there's people I, I very much respect on twitter complaining about this i'm like so just buy the other one then. yeah they still <laughs> have it that's this is basically not for you if you're like, but I want to hook it up to a TV. Well, that, that's what the switch is. That's what the other switch is for. You're absolutely right. Here's the here's the thing, too. Like, I will probably end up with one of these, and I will justify it as a business purchase. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What I really well, need you, these you, things. You do several video game review shows. You have to. I do. I kind of have to in this case. That's right, Tom. I have to. <laughs> you do. It's, it's, I, 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 I don't even think that's a rationalization. I think that's a, it's essential to your livelihood. I think yeah. you're right, but it still feels funny when I say it. But anyway, yeah, here's, so here's, here's my thinking. They've also promised better synchronization of cloud saves. That's key for me here because a lot of people are going to buy one of these because, it, A, it does have a proper D-pad. The current Joy-Con setup is not optimal mm-hmm. when you're doing D-pad stuff, let's say, a game like Super Mario uh, Maker 2 is much better with an actual D-pad, which is why I play it on my Pro Controller. Um, so there's an advantage there. 
and not unlike the I mean we have experience with this the 3DS was a huge popular success later on down the road they came out with a much less expensive model called the 2DS and yeah. it, it, it made it so all the 3D stuff was just not there and it was a much less ex uh, expensive thing and it was also one that kids couldn't break as much which is a factor here by the way um, part of what we forget about is a lot of kids are using these portably if they're buying them for their kids and they're breaking because joy cons are weird and they pop off easy it's not meant for you know lots of kids banging it around or whatever this is a much more sturdy solution for them but they're also thinner and sexy and i totally want one i want a yellow one and i want it yesterday i'm gonna have to wait till 2020 <laughs> who's, though. The, who's the first modder that's going to uh t turn that d-pad into a, a standalone joy con you can use with any switch probably almost immediately as soon as that thing comes yeah. out someone will figure out a way to do it but if i had only one complaint it would be this um, and it's a minor one. And again, Tom made the point that this isn't for you. You have the old Switch, not the old Switch. You have the, the, the current version of the Switch, which you can do all the things on a TV. But for people who want to capture video or want to do stuff for YouTube channels or stream it on Twitch or whatever, you are very limited. In fact, there are no current options to do that with this new device. Um, the old device, no problem. Yeah. Hook it up to a Delgado, capture it on HDMI. It's not a problem. But Or Elgato, not Delgado. Uh, but if you if you take the, uh, the cat. <laughs> yeah, if you take the the new console, if you take that thing and try to stream it, you're not going to be able to do it. They don't have any kind of AirPlay or any kind of you know remote anything. Or at least not, they don't yet. So that may be a thing they address at some point. But also, Nintendo is notoriously weird about who they let stream their content anyway and get paid for it. So I, I wouldn't hold your breath if if you're just looking for a great portable, less expensive solution in this awesome little Switch ecosystem. This thing looks rad. If you want all the bells and whistles and want to have the versatility, buy the other Switch or stick with the one you have. There is something to be said for the idea that uh, there's a USB-C port on the Switch Mini. Couldn't you just allow that to send out video? Like, why are you blocking it, right? I don't know if there's any extra hardware they saved by not supporting the TV dock, but maybe just not including the dock would have been fine instead mm -hmm. of saying you can't use it maybe it'll work i don't know uh it certainly won't fit in the dock properly uh because it's a little bit tinier but uh the the streaming capture part of it though you could do that i think i think that they should uh, allow just a cable like that's yeah. all USB-C anyway so just put just because the bottom's still going to have your charging i assume it's at the bottom i don't know where it is but mm -hmm. you're still going to have that connector that's the same connector that the dock then sends to hdmi so a i USB mean is it though USB C has all kinds of implementation so i don't know if maybe this is a cheaper implementation that doesn't support video out i don't know oh good point it might just be a charge only USB C port but that's what i wish they would have done is made it so and maybe they have and they haven't told us i mean there's a lot of stuff we don't know Cap cap kippers uh generously generously wrote not everyone follows the USB C spec properly <laughs> i i would modify that to say almost no one follows the USB C spec <laughs> but isn't that always been true like the USB specs of of old even everybody always did something weird or if it was hdmi everybody's always fiddling with the wrong version well, that's another or... story we'll be talking about uh certainly on daily tech headlines probably on dtns is raspberry pi 4 didn't follow the USB C smart properly Ooh. and not all charging cables. Like the MacBook Pro charging cable doesn't work with the Raspberry Pi 4. That's that's not great. I don't love any of that. All right. Well, uh, we'll get to that later on the show, of course. I'm excited that today is a little bit of switch talk because uh, I have some passion for this. And uh, we'll see what happens. Brian, are you gonna get one of these? Do you have a desire I'm not to get one? No, I mean I've got a regular switch. There's not really there's not really a big benefit to me. Um yeah. Pick up the, it's not the more powerful. Out. The screen's a little mm. smaller. Uh, yeah. It's thinner and stuff, which is neat. But yeah, all you'd really be getting is color, a, a color change it, and right. a D-pad. And I can probably go to, um, <clears throat> what's that? There was a company that did all those, uh, will recolor your tech. And I can't remember the name of it. They were huge with like MacBooks oh, and, and things right, like that that would... Right. That would color dip your your tech or something. <laughs> like, I don't like even want to do that. Cause job. I, yeah, right. Exactly. I don't even care about doing that. So yeah, no. I colorware. That was it. JC Calhoun. Yeah, no. There's just for a colored uh, 
the switch nah no that's all right thanks yeah you're good <laughs> there are other things that i there are other wasteful things i need to spend my money on <laughs> you'll you'll save that 200 bucks i think the price point's good though this just reminds me of the ds Lite conversion the big difference here is they've they're still straddling like this is on a tv and it's not i think they also probably have data a ton of data at nintendo that has shown that m i shouldn't say most because i don't know this data i'm just going to assume this that a big portion of people are purely portable with that thing or mostly portable mm -hmm. with it um right, i know i right. am i know most of my friends are i hardly know I anyone who isn't as well yeah. yeah so i know that there's plenty of reasons to put, plug it into a tv my only reasons to do that these days unless i'm doing something with the kids or whatever is to stream it so i think this is a smart business move and it also covers two two mark two categories of their market so i think it's i think it's fine i'm excited for him this is going to be a big deal for them i wish it was this holiday season though tom that part bums me out a little bit but, yeah right later in the year but yeah i've well, got all that other stuff coming Wait, wait, you you you're upset that it's coming out sooner? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm upset it's not coming out till 2020. Because he did say a minute ago he wants it now. <laughs> yeah, I want it now, but I want it in I want it in 2019. They got 2020 on this business, right? Or to have that wrong? No, September 20th, 2019. Oh, why did I read that as 2020? Because you saw the 20 in September 20, I guess. Oh, but, yeah. I'm not I was excited. confused when you said too bad it's not holiday season. I'm like, so you want it later in the year? <laughs> like, no, you're, you're like Santa Claus. I didn't know. Was, this is great. <laughs> Can I pre order this thing yet? Probably not. Uh, you could order it September 20th. Okay. All right. I want to get one. That's um, the, my wedding anniversary. So, oh, congratulations. You're going to buy an Eileen and I wedding present. <laughs> Well, that's what they did. What year is it? Because that could be the Switch uh, uh, instead of, you know, diamonds or, or uh, Yeah, the paper. Switch anniversary. Yeah, the yeah, Switch anniversary. Uh, it's the 16th. The 16th anniversary is the Switch anniversary. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, perfect timing then. Ooh. Also Colorware offers um, skins, so I don't have to send the product to them oh. to get uh, painted. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, then you have to apply it yourself. But I'm fine with that. I is it a sticky or is it something that's removable? I think it's that 3M sticky that uh -huh. doesn't leave a residue. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm. That's not bad. No, that's not bad at all. I'll do that. And mm. I can have whatever color I want. Why am I so yeah. excited? Yeah. So excited. Stick to red or yellow, gray, and blue. <laughs> right, whatever exactly. Her. Whatever they're doing. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, this is all good. We'll do more of this. 2.30 Mountain Time, uh, dailytechnewsshow.com for details. Tom, anything else people should know about before you get out of here? Uh, just a reminder that if you just want to keep up with what I'm doing, have a chat with me, uh, you can subscribe to my newsletter, email the uh, the unsocial network uh, where you can find out everything I'm doing and talk to me uh, over the electronic mail. That's freetomnewsletter.com. That's how you do it, freetomnewsletter.com. That sounds good to me. We'll see you later this afternoon. Goodbye. All right, Brian. All right, Scott. Let's make you full screen. There you go. Ooh, I'm bigger now. For some reason, it switches when I kill Tom, but not when I kill Dunaway. It must be a video thing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, uh, oh, Nicole. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, that? that's what's up. Little Nicole. Let's get yeah. her in here. See what's what, what's going on, what's happening in her end of the world, which is kind of your end of the world as well. It's our end of the world, Scott. Yes. Yes. Here's this. Oh, Joining us on the program is Nicole Spagnolo, all the way from Colorado also, and she is here to do new recommendals with us. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Is my video not working? It's spinning. I'm not me. seeing it. But just turn my turn camera, I like did. click the little camera icon off and on. No? I've done it five times. Oh. <laughs> not working? Well, shoot. Weird. I don't know what that is. Weird. Mark! I guess. No, it's not Mark. It's <laughs> Discord. Discord! Disc <laughs> Discord. <laughs> Discord isn't perfect, I'll tell you right. that. Well, anyway, well, I'm just glad to have you either way. We'll take you oh, however we can get you. Yeah. Uh, Nicole comes on Wednesdays. We do recommendals, stuff from streaming services that we like, and it's one of our favorite segments because it gives us all great excuses to watch cool stuff, even when we don't need to. So, uh, Brian, we'll start with you because you've got, uh, you got starting position every time on this. So what do you want to do here sure. with the clip? Sure, starting anyway? lineup. Uh, so you know how we talk about all these great streaming services that you pay for and then you get to watch this stuff for free? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This isn't available on there right now, but you can um, uh, you can rent the whole season for, uh, or you can buy the whole season for 10 bucks on Amazon. So oh, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. 
Uh, Scott, go ahead and play my clip. Here you go. You did well last night. I know it's not the kind of thing that you are accustomed to. How do you do this? How do, how do you... How does it not get to you? You find... ways to cope. I didn't say there were good ways. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> That uh, So the people you're hearing right there were uh, J. Jonah Jameson himself, uh, J.K. Simmons, and Olivia Williams. Um, uh, if Tom were here still, he'd absolutely know what this is because he oh, loves this show. Right. This is uh, Counterpart, right? Mm. which yeah. is a TV series that aired on Stars. But even if you pay for the Stars app, you don't get counterpart what <laughs> yes even hbo uh, gives you all their i know stuff. All the past stuff yeah stars is stars is lame about that so um for whatever reason we bought the app we're thinking all right well let's let's sit down and watch counterpart nope not happening hmm. um but uh but you can rent each season or, or buy the season uh for 10 bucks on amazon and How many there, are seasons two are season, there? there are two seasons 10 episodes per season and basically here's the premise um jk simmons is a guy named uh, howard silk and he's been working for a united nations uh, agency in berlin and every once in a while he's asked to go into a room uh on the other side of the or in the room is a glass window and a desk on the other side of that glass window is another agent and he has to give coded messages back and forth with that agent and then he leaves the room not knowing what what kind of messages he's just given. Hmm. Uh, but he finds out that um, this company called Office of Interchange is actually a crossing point to a parallel Earth. Okay. Uh, which is, it's <laughs> right. a parallel Earth. So it just went sci-fi. <laughs> it just went sci-fi. Okay. And, uh, and there's a J.K. Simmons, there's a Howard Silk on the other side. I mean, there's basically a mirror image of everybody on the other side, but different you know, a whole different background and a whole different uh, uh, lifestyle things that have happened uh, mm -hmm. to all those other other versions of the characters. And all this happens in the first episode, by the way. So this is this is not really a spoiler. And he's asked to to go um, or work with his other, his J.K. Simmons other, and uncover a uh, conspiracy that um, uh, that is going on between mm -hmm. the two the two earths hmm. interesting it's you, amazing it's just really by amazing. saying because it sounded like it was just going to be like a like a 24 like you know a, yeah, like, yeah, yeah i'm not really but as soon as you said other worlds okay i'm in you're in <laughs> um in. and it's great it's so well done the acting is really good very fringy yeah tonda gossip brings up fringe um not a lot of other actors that you recognize although james cromwell does make an appearance oh i love james cromwell he's great who doesn't love james cromwell but you know jk simmons you know olivia williams um harry lloyd uh, is in this he he was in a couple doctor who episodes he was uh uh viserys targaryen in the first season you know old golden head uh oh, viserys targaryen okay. cool i haven't seen him in a while yeah um but for the most part everybody else on here is is not somebody you immediately uh recognize but we're we're loving it and there was a little bit of a slog in the sixth or seventh episode and then eighth pick right back up and we're like oh my god i can't wait to find out what happens so hmm. um we're watching it via the help of a of a very generous listener mm -hmm. <laughs> um, who will probably offer you the same help i think you've already got that help available to you yep but um this is great it's really really cool He's and even helpful. though it got canceled um I hear there's a there is kind of a, a movement going to kind of bring it back on another channel, but hmm. from what I hear, the, all the a lot of the storylines that they set up in seasons one and two do get wrapped up at the end of season two. There's there's maybe a couple uh, plot lines that does that don't get wrapped up perfectly, but yeah, even Thor four three two one says it ends fine. Mm. Okay, 
I mean, you got me. You have me. You got me peaked. Brian or Tom's been raving about yes. this thing, so he has. And and boy, if if there was, uh, you know, if you were looking for something even better than having a, a, a TV series with J.K. Simmons in the starring role, mm -hmm. imagine uh, two J.K. Simmons in two starring roles, and and you're you know you'll love this even more. Sounds so really this is a relatively new show because the final episode was uh, back in February. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. a few months yeah. ago. Bums me out that yeah, they uh, months, that it got to cancel, but it seems like a good pickup for somebody. Somebody could pick this up and wrap things up and um, give us a third so or fourth season. So surprise is not in the Stars app. I know, That's right? It's weird, right? Why even have the Stars app if you can't have a Stars original in there? That makes exactly. no sense. Exactly. It makes me never want to pick up the Stars app again. Yeah. Dumb. F you, Stars. Speaking of Stars, oh. yeah. I really, really do not like American Gods season two. Yeah, no. it's not no. great. I hate it so much. I hate Did it so you watch? Much. Like, Have I'm you watched... so bitter watching it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch Good Omens? Yes, and I loved it. Yeah, that's okay. That's your palate cleanser for yes. for the the taste, the bad taste that American God season two left in your mouth. I haven't even fin. I I'm like so mad at it. I <laughs> I don't want to finish it. Like I Dude, have two I more episodes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just like I just get mad when I watch it. I'm like I hate this. That's right. You know what else? Oh. You know what else will fix it for you when they get that Sandman show out, which they're working on now, and Gaiman's all mm -hmm. behind again because he, you know, of course, wrote Sandman all those years ago for DC and Vertigo. Uh, that series sounds like it could be really cool. That's coming to Netflix. Good showrunners. Like I think maybe that'll make up for mm -hmm. what what American Gods is slipping into, which is sounds not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've only seen bits of t season two, and I did not like what I saw. So. Really bums me out. It's my favorite book, maybe of all time. I love that book. Which and, book? Uh, American Gods. It's one of my favorite yeah, books. Yeah, the book is amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible. So, and, and the, the first, first season is good. It's great. Yeah. yeah. The first season, and it just went off the rails on season two, and I'm like, really did. you had the formula. It was written down on paper. You <laughs> had the <laughs> formula. <laughs> did you say formula? Because that's awesome. Formula. You had formula. the formula. <laughs> If I got the formula. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. Uh, well, now that we've had an awesome <laughs> mispronunciation from Nicole, I will now move on with my recommendal. So this is a movie that has been out for a while, and I just happen to love it, and I watched it again, and people aren't going to be surprised because it's in a genre that I very much like. So here's my clip. Open the pack and tip it out on the road nice and slow. Can't do that. Take off the pack and put it on the ground. Or die! Are you listening to me? I am now. Good. You listening to me? Yeah. Good. Put that hand on me again, you won't get it back. <laughs> All right, guesses? <laughs> yeah, only because I know when we talked about this uh, after Film Sack last week that when we decided we weren't going to watch it for Film Sack, it opened it up to all of us watching it for fun. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Book of Eli. Book of Eli, oh, 2010. Yeah. I like that one. I yeah. like that yeah. movie. I love. Yeah. I love this movie. It's one of my it's favorite yeah. post-apocalyptic kind of things. It's got a very interesting conceit to it. Some people think it's too religious at the end, and I would argue they're missing the point. I don't think it's religious at all. I think the the way that they handle that particular plot point is fascinating. I think the twist is really great, and I didn't see it coming. Um, that's a funny way to say that. Uh, I don't want to give anything away, but I did, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. did not see it coming. Anyway, it's uh, uh, directed by the Hughes brothers, Alan and Albert Hughes. They are famous for a bunch of other stuff. But uh, this is one of those that was written by Gary Whitta. Uh, you may know him as former editor of PC Magazine. Uh, was on Tested for a long time. Uh, British dude who's uh, done some other stuff since, worked on Star Wars and some other things. But anyway, kind of comes from us. He's our people. Uh -huh. And this was his first big uh, gig as a uh, screenwriter that got picked up. And uh, I really like the story a lot. It's Denzel Washington and Gary Oldman is the bad guy. And he's just eats up the scenery as, as the bad guy, as he often does. He's really fantastic in it. Mila Kunis is in it. And I think she's great uh, always, but I really like her in this. Jennifer Beals, of all people, is in this. Hmm. Um, it's awesome. I like it a lot. Great. It's uh, got Tom Waits in it, and every time I see him, I think of Ibbet for some reason, and I don't know why. Probably just music reasons. Because I like Tom Waits, and he's just such a bizarre individual and musician, and yeah, 
his thing yeah. in wasn't he was in um the buster scruggs all thing the, the jarmouche stuff he was in the buster scruggs he was things, the yeah. he was the mm-hmm. prospector guy he was in was the uh digging the hole he was whatever. renfield in the uh the dracula movie the gary oldman dracula movie yeah he's just a trip and he's great in this mm-hmm. also i just love post-apocalyptica it's my favorite genre and when it's done right i get super excited and i feel like this is one of those that does it right also the soundtrack's really good i ended up listening to that a bunch after uh that guy's awesome makes great soundtracks i forgot his name but i really like the soundtrack and i would highly recommend it i will probably watch this a couple of few more times before it leaves netflix because that's how much i like it yeah i like it a lot i mean it's no mad max fury road don't get me wrong uh, it's not perfect, but <laughs> it's got a great twist, and it's a fun look at that stuff. And I love that setting, so I'm all in. So check it out on Netflix now, Book of Eli. It's very good. Mm-hmm. All right, Nicole, what do you got? All right. Uh, something that's going to be hard to talk about. Oh, <laughs> so, ooh, all right. Okay. okay. Uh, in fact, I have knots in my stomach. <laughs> so oh, jeez. Right. All right. Really? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to send you the clip. All right. And it's a topic close to home, literally for me. All right. I see. The, I see the post. Hold on. It's it's thinking. Okay. There we go. It's a documentary. I'm playing it now. Whoops. Having a friend present it in an honest, genuine way is the only way that I would agree to do something like this. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. This is being called one of the worst school shootings in our nation. We learned to live together because we were all under the same microscope. You were forced to grow up far too quickly, and you were denied a normal high school life. So, I have not. This sounds like a Columbine thing. Would I be right? I was going to say since it's since it's referencing column or uh, high school, I'm going to guess Columbine. Mm. Yeah. So this is on Hulu. It is a documentary called We Are Columbine. Mm. Um, this hits home because this is the school my children are supposed to go to. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Um, so my job is, you know, moving to this area. I'm trying to, like, when we when we moved out here, we didn't realize at all that Columbine was there. Mm-hmm. There is a weird uh, mythos that has occurred because this was really in 1999 the first traumatic school shooting that took the nation. Like I looked up uh, just recently because Columbine came back in the news because Mm -hmm. it was 20 years. Mm -hmm. Um, And I received, uh, because we're in Jeffco, I received an email because they're going to, they're trying to decide whether or not to tear it down. I'm a little surprised they never did. They tend to do this. Like the the one where they shot on little kids, that one's, got torn down and yeah. rightly so i that I just is don't know. now just, the protocol this yeah. was the first they didn't know how to handle it right, they had right. no idea how to handle it right um you have a lot of misconceptions um i i find it fascinating when all of this kind of stirred up again random people that don't even live here <laughs> chiming in don't let them win don't and like you don't have kids that go here. Yeah. Here's a really interesting fact about Columbine mm. High School. Mm. In this year alone, they had over 2,400 unauthorized or arrests for people trying to get into the school. Mm-hmm. 2,400. Mm-hmm. Some of them are like just lucky dockers. Lucky yeah. lose. There are mm-hmm. tourists. They're, call, they're mm-hmm. called Columbiners. Mm. Um, there is a brilliant blog post by a former teacher that was there in 1999 who was one of the the people that initially said we can't tear it down but she has changed her tune Mm. because she has seen the traumatic things that are happening to these kids that go to this school Mm. that they are they're having to deal with lockdowns they're having to deal with a a young uh, she was a young woman from florida that flew Mm. out here Mm -hmm. with and got a gun Wanted to be and there she, for the anniversary. Uh, and, yeah. It just is a yeah. mess. It's such a mess. Mm. And it, it actually makes me shake thinking about it. Yeah, of course so it does. This, you're, a, you're a parent and this is the future of where your kids are going to go. And I don't even think you're, I don't think your emotions are, pro- I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're not so much about, oh, what's going to happen to them while they're there. It's just that this thing has got, it's freaking haunted. And I don't mean in a supernatural way. Like it's just it, yeah. haunted mm-hmm. and tainted and awful. 
And it's easy so to say. So what stigmatism attached to? Right. Uh, so the the blog post is by a teacher. Her name's Paula Reed. I really, I'm going to put the link in the chat room. I'm going to give it to you. It is a fascinating read because she talks about, so the library is where a lot of the death happened. Yeah. They tore that down. Yeah. So when people actually get into the school and they ask where the library is and they, and the teach, she's like, I've seen it. I tell them the library was torn down. This is the new library. Mm -hmm. Their faces like drip in disappointment. Yeah, F and, those guys. I mean, look, mm. I like I like true crime documentary as much as the next person because I find the, the process fascinating and I, I want to hear the yeah. stories and stuff. But a-holes mm -hmm. who show up thinking they're just going to be freaking tourists of the place, go yeah. jump on a rake, dude. F those guys. Yeah, right. Oh, that it's, makes me angry. I know. By the it's, way, it's by the way, not stigmatism. Stigma is is what I meant to say. Stigma <laughs> attached to this. Stigma. Yeah, there's no stigmatism. <laughs> stigmatism. Um, <laughs> What is really frustrating to see, uh, I'm on, you know, next door and they br brought it up there are, and it's, I, mean, I don't mean to generalize, but it's usually the old people are like, don't you tear that down. That's going to waste my tax dollars, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God, if I could reach through the screen and slap you, I would. <laughs> that um, just really and, shits my brick. The, mm. the other part of Paula's blog post is talking about the history of the building and how it literally is falling apart. Yeah. Like, it's just a junk building. That's another reason to tear it down. Yeah, it's, all, it's also old, exactly. Like, they're they're yeah. tearing down my high school, uh, I found out recently, just because it's old. And it's not that, it's not even that old. Like, it's it's sort of old, but not really. And they're going to tear it down anyway. If they have, if they're going to do that, and we've never had a shooting there, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> how many reasons do you need? Like, yeah. uh, there's a lot of things need to happen here. Number one among them is let's take better care of our kids. Let's have better, more common sense laws. Let's do yeah. lots of things. But one of the things you can do is take that school down and put up another one and have a really positive, fresh start. And, you know, like I, I think, you know, I we all since we're, we're talking about shootings, there's always going to be talk about gun control. But what I what I liked about this documentary was they focused on four of the students that were there and how it affected them. And it and it, there were actually the principal and another teacher that was there too. And the the person doing the documentary, she was a student as well. And I don't think there's ever been a, a, a face put on it um, and talking about how the media presence there affected them and how just the whole, whole situation and moving forward um, four of the students that they interviewed, three of them are in public service. One's a social worker, one's a nurse, one's a teacher. Mm -hmm. So, and kind of how that experience shaped their life moving forward. Mm. Um, it's, it's a good documentary. Uh, there's also a book out there called Columbine that I, I haven't had a chance to read yet, but you, ha because of the, the mythos, the, the, this whole thing you know there was rumors going around that you know the i'm not saying their name that they were bu bullied and all that they they weren't mm. <laughs> there was no trench coats mafia like all of those things are debunked they were not bullied by athletes there were there were a number of things um it's always more complicated than people reduce yes. it to they're it just a well, even so, even if they were that doesn't you know justify exactly. anything of, of yeah right but it does go into the the school itself i will say that school and the people in that school are amazing like th what they've had to endure and continue to endure and Ugh. you know uh as so as a parent that has a child two children that are are kind of mm -hmm. that is their path that i see um a lot of parents go to another school mm -hmm. and 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 it's kind of a hush hush kind of thing where like yeah you don't want to send your kids there and it's like what <laughs> like i'm trying you know i'm new to the area so you know you kind of and every it's weird because there's other parents are like that have gone there and they're like it's an amazing school yes but it has that tainted thing where these sickos want to come there 
all the time and you know lockdowns happen and anytime a school shooting happens not here anytime a school shooting happens i drive by columbine almost daily there will be a camera cr- crew out there yeah, F- just F- to F- film. those guys f them yeah mm-hmm. oh it makes me mad yeah so i like i said this this is a very uncomfortable topic for me but um i'm so close to it i felt like i it's a it's a good documentary it gives a a different face to it and it i it was it was a good watch so it's on hulu i'm sorry so tell our columbine is on hulu tell me the uh, and it's good uh, i mean as the documentary itself though you liked it it was a good it gave a good picture of everything and all that okay all right it gave a different view and put human faces on a strategy that again you know I, I was in I lived in Missouri at the time uh, when this happened mm. and the way that media treated it and how it was sensationalized um, I kind of it almost was like a a movie I, I, I it's hard to explain it like mm. it was I know it was real but it didn't seem real the way it was being handled yeah it's almost like when the first time I, I went to California and I was like this is I'm here. This is the, how am I here? This is the stuff I see on TV. Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm. when you live in the Midwest, you live in, you know, middle of nowhere and you see stuff on television. It's very hard to connect it being truly like real. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I totally get what you mean. I totally get what you mean about that. It's a weird thing, right? Like if you go to, for us, it was, um, there was a shooting in a place downtown called, trolley square it's like a shopping thing it used to be this huge trolley station back in the 1800s but they converted it's all this really upscale nice shopping kind of space and there was a shooting there one time this is years ago and somebody was killed they caught the guy or he committed suicide or something it's one of these awful things and to this day when i go there because we'll still go there we'll be there for some reason or another i still we'll get to like a certain part of that place and I know right where the shooting happened and it feels just surreal. Like I'm in this Weird. Yeah. forbidden yeah. zone. I just hate it. So imagine kids having to walk through that all day. Like yeah. all day. One mm-hmm. of the most infamous, horrible, awful mass shootings ever. And you got And these kids are just, oh, well, I'm seeing math. Like, ugh, that sucks. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. Those kids should be more important. It's not about your tax dollars. It's about these freaking human yeah. beings and their mental, yeah. like, healing you're like just don't do it right freaking awful all right so uh, the documentary is good um like i said it puts a human face on uh, a tragedy that uh and how they've processed it and i mean those kids are what in their th- mid 30 almost 40s now it was in 99 mm-hmm. they're like yeah they're like a little younger than me that's just crazy to think yeah they have families now. Yeah. A lot of them haven't left the area. Yeah. Um. So. So yeah. Yeah, I'll watch there that. I that, I think that kind of stuff's important. It, um, like I said, it's a it, it's hard. It's but not important. a fun watch, but right. I think it's an important watch. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Sometimes that the harder that stuff is, the better. It's just important. I agree with you. Uh, totally on board with that recommendation. It's on Hulu, you say, right? Hulu, yeah. All right. And I in the Discord I put the link to Paula Reed's blog post. So it's a long one, but it's I think it's a really it's a really well written uh, blog post about the whole thing that's happening now. Do they get into the whole like everybody was trying to blame video games on it and stuff? Do they get into that? No, oh, it none. Infuriates none of that. me. It's like the kids no. had Doom on their computer. We all right. had Doom right. on our computers. <laughs> exactly. Every yes. damn one of us. If we had a computer, get Doom on it. No, break. they actually, the four, I, I keep calling them kids. They're not kids anymore. Um, they actually go back to the school the and subjects. kind mm. of uh, show where they were when it happened and the confusion and what they did and, and the guilt that a lot of them felt. Oh, like, right. Survivor's you know, guilt kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and talking about it. So. All right. I just found out that Jason Chaffetz went to my high school and I'm irritated. Did you go to Brighton High School? I did. Okay, I saw the photos you were putting in there. Like, why? Why? They, cause some, someone in the chat room is asking about how old the school was because I was saying they were tearing oh, it down and it gotcha. was built in the 70s. It's not a very old school, maybe 71 gotcha. or 72 or something. 
Anyway, yeah. uh, there you go. Nicole will put all these up on her Twitter yep. account, at Nicole Spag. So you're going to want to check that out if you haven't already. Nicole, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye now. Bye. There we go. <laughs> She's got real quiet there at the end. I know. She disappeared. Weird. Uh, all right. You know. Well, on that very positive note, <laughs> we will now... <laughs> Uh, read a quick email, and then I got a thing for people. Yeah. This is going to be interesting. So here's the email. Uh, this is from Todd slash truth dot AI or underscore AIE. Uh, he sent this in because yesterday we talked about the guy that ate the, ate the gecko and died, right? Mm -hmm. Was that right, yesterday? Australian, was that, yeah. that was yesterday, wasn't it? I think it was yesterday. It was yesterday. Mm -hmm. He says, Come on, Scott. Australian man dies from eating a gecko and no tie in to the two headed gecko that Mad Max eats in the opening of Fury Road. I'm shocked. <laughs> that's a good point shame on you scott what a uh, glaring omission <laughs> yeah he's he's right i totally spaced that off but yeah. uh also i didn't know it was a gecko i just thought it was a two-headed lizard is there a difference i don't know maybe there's no difference so i don't know what that uh, thing in mad max well, is all geckos are lizards but not all lizards are geckos oh i didn't know that wait oh yeah yeah yeah. no i would know that yeah yeah the yeah, other way it would, would be weird that. you know that yeah, yeah. All right. Well, whatever he ate, it was two heads. It was CGI, and everyone lived. So, well, Max lived. And two ho two heads taste better than one. That's what I, that's what the kids tell me. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Here's a fun <laughs> thing we're gonna do today. That uh, this is a promotion we're gonna do, and it's a way for me to own not only own the upcoming uh, turmoil that is my birthday. <laughs> But, Ain't nothing but a number, Scott. Ain't nothing but a nothing number. But, I'm trying to remember that. I'm trying to keep Brian's sort of zen attitude about it in my head. But here's what we're going to do. This starts today. We're going to alternate a bunch of codes between now and then for people who want to get stuff on the store for super cheap. So if you go to frogpants.com slash store and you use this code, real old... Because I'm turning 50. I'm turning 50 in like a week and a half. <laughs> right. Uh, real, real old is the code. All, all one word. Real old. It's good for 50% off the book, which is my comics compilation of 14 years. Hard or soft cover, doesn't matter. Half off. That's the that's the deepest cut we've ever done on those. Um, we keep them stocked there because they still sell. But if, cool. if you want to get a screaming deal, now's the time to do it. This will run until noon Eastern tomorrow when we announce the next one. So... Get in there. If you were, cool. if you never got your hands on that book before, I have one here somewhere. I don't know. They're over there. I have mine right there. Yeah. It's a, hold mine up? Yeah, hold it up. Brian's got one. He's got access to all this stuff faster than I do. I need more shelves behind me. There you go. There's the, there's a, that's soft cover, right? Th that one's available. Uh, I'll sign it. Like, I'll do the whole schmear for you. So uh, go check that out. That's real old. Good for 50% off the book. It's on the store. You can find it under books. On, I can't uh, believe you didn't sign mine. Store. Jeez. Didn't I? No. Oh, we can fix that sometime. <laughs> like you need my signature for anything. Yeah, exactly. Well, I need it for other uh, things, but. Yeah. Like when he's. <laughs> break, for my checks. <laughs> yeah, when you're breaking into that bank account. Uh, he needs my. That's right. My forged thing. Um, all right, uh, that's it for that, and that's it for the show. Huge thanks to everybody who supports us on Patreon. I always want to give them a shout-out at patreon.com slash TMS. It means much, so big thanks. Also, the morning stream at G... Oh, real quick to patrons, as many of you know, uh, there's we give you a folder that's just full of sound clips that we have on the show. I have been uh, remiss for a long time in putting fresh ones in there, so I'm about to add a monster load of new, fresh sound clips you can use for your phone ringers and your freaking text oh, cool. notifications and whatever you want a lot of stuff you've heard on the show lots of short little blips those are all going in there in mp3 format today sometime so watch for and that. a caveman and a caveman i think that one's in there it um, should be it's you, not it's a it's a it's a missed opportunity it is if you're trying to get a hold of us in general or looking for all our other details you can find those at frogpants.com slash tms all right let's get out of here brian will now yes sir. uh unveil a song Yes, it's time for a request going out to Gary from the Toy Story lot, from the Woody lot, I believe he's in. 
Uh, hey there, s &B. All three of us are approaching milestone birthdays. On Friday, July 12th, I stop pushing 70 and start pulling it along like a trailer. I'm putting in a request for uh, Thursday, July 11th, but any time that week is fine. I'd love to hear a cover of Neil Young's Long May You Run, which would be appropriate. Or if you have something else in mind, I trust your judgment. Is there a caveman? Speaking oh, of which. Oh, my Lord. Um, that's funny. Yeah, there is. It's uh, right here, I'm sure. <laughs> it caught me off guard. Uh, oops, caveman. I mean, I'm sure, Gary, I mean, I'm sure you, you know, you knew enough of them. You, you knew enough cavemen. You could have uh, had them just say, and a caveman. There you go. A 60-ton dinosaur tamed by a small... Oh, that's not it. Then a caveman. Yeah, okay, there you go. It's just a long one. Yeah, there you go. Then a caveman. All right. There you go. There you go. Uh, love the show, though. Signed, Gary, the even more senior geek. Uh, well, first off, happy birthday, Gary. You're one of the uh, stalwarts of the Tadpole community, and we love having you here. And and think we always think of you uh, at, at many a Nerdtacular lining up to be the first in line to ask a question during panels and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. The former Gary from Lantronics, now the Gary from the Woody lot. It was the best part about it because he would say, hi, you guys may not remember me. I'm Gary you from guys, Lantronics. I don't know if you know me. I'm Gary from <laughs> Lantronics. <laughs> It's so good. It's great. It yeah. was the best. Yeah. Uh, so a cover of Long May You Run. Now, this uh, originally, uh, a lot of people attribute it fully to Neil Young, but actually it was a Stills Young project. As a matter of fact, the band that it's credited to uh, that first played it was the Stills Young Band, so Stephen Stills and, and Neil Young. Um, this cover comes to us from Tale Wolf Graham and Simone Felice. And if you don't know those names, don't worry. You don't know those names. I don't know those names. But I do know this cover, and I know that Gary's going to love it. Came out in 2012 as part of the Rock Quiz duets. Rock Quiz is this great music game show from Australia. Um, I don't know why we don't have something like this in the U.S., but, man, Rock Quiz was the best. And at the end of every episode, the two celebrity musicians that they'd have playing along with the contestants would join forces for a cover sometimes a duet sometimes not but they would sing together and it'd be really cool they did this cover right here of the stills young bands long may you run going out to gary all right we'll see you guys tomorrow it'll be thursday gidget's coming on early to do a little quiz with us so Woo! check that out also my sister will be here we got lots to talk about there as well thanks everybody for listening we'll see you then this show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. You deformed nerd. <laughs> Ooh. That's not nice. No, deformed. Yeah, I don't. I don't Nerd's know I, fine. I don't but, I like uh, that.